My friend Linda invited me to the launch of her new cabaret magazine with the lovely Ali McGregor, a fabulous opera singer. These things happen a lot in the lead up to the comedy festival, so I thought I would interview Ali for this week's video. I practiced my interviewing techniques on Arnold, who ordinarily is not allowed on the couch, but I couldn't really have Ali sitting on the floor during our interview either, so I made an exception. I polished my microphone technique. I didn't know you licked your balls. Rehearsed my jokes. I've always thought that I could sing opera. I do have the bosom for it. Planned how we would even sing an aria together. Oh! and established that I could indeed cope in the event that she unexpectedly jumped on me. I was excited and I got all dressed up for it. It is a very impressive magazine and it's, it's actually something that I thought that should be available mm. for, you know, quite a while. Every time someone comes to one of our shows or I go to other cabaret kind of acts, people are always going, oh, I love this, I want to see more of this. And there's not really a place where they can go and just say, oh, this is the type of thing I like, I want to see more of it. If you look at sort of cabaret listings in papers, it's usually kind of, life is a cabaret. And it's kind of not really the same thing. And there's this kind of little underbelly between genre thing of, you know, the Tim Minchins and Eddie Perfects and stuff who are doing cabaret but doing it with a little slightly dark twist. I want a perfect body. I want a perfect Well, people always think it's a little bit cheesy, really, mm. don't they? It, it is that kind of life as a cabaret kind of mm. sort Which of is thing, why we call which... it Curiosity Killed the Cabaret, because I feel like the word cabaret has been killed for us. And yeah. there's not really another term that we can use. So if there was to be another term that you could use, mm. what would it be? If you were to mm. coin a term. Cabaret spelling with a K and two Ts, the German Berliner Cabaret, mm. is one thing that it gets used. But even that has a bit of a cliche to it. I don't know. I, I spent the last few years trying to defy genres. So maybe that's why I haven't thought of a name, because I'm quite liking slipping in between them. With the whole story of my opera burlesque is that in the mid-1800s there was this bunch of chorus girls um, who used to be singing in operas at Covent Garden and they would sing their opera and afterwards they'd take off their outer clothes and keep their corsets and drawers and hop in a carriage and go to the east end of London and sing their arias for the vaudeville public. I loved this idea that these girls would come out and do the you know their arias for people who wouldn't be able to afford to go to the opera and then probably wouldn't even want to. I got four people from the chorus and I built this big shell and we crept over to the Spiegel tent and I came out of a shell singing an aria. That was the first little thing of the Spiegel tent and ever since then, you know, then I got asked to be in La Clique and I've met the most extraordinary people who all have created their own genre. I have so much admiration for that. Well done. Stumbling home from the launch, I thought about what I'd learned. 
Two of the most important aspects to successful interviewing are one, to be sober enough to ask the right questions, and two, to make sure that you've got enough tape to actually get that aria duet that you did sing with your guest at the end. Damn. Oh well, it was a long, fun and blurry night. But I knew that I would carry the magic of Ali and Linda's warmth and hospitality with me for a long time afterwards. And I'm sure that their magazine is going to be very successful.